energy level? Yes. Okay. Are we sleeping? Yes. Are we waking up? Yes. Okay. Do we have energy for when we wake up? No. no. We're all sleeping. We're all tired still. Okay. Is your body a little achy? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of science that goes into how we're going to take care of our bodies and how we're going to grow. All right. And uh, how we're going to get better and better every day. All right. And the ownership is on you. At the end of the day, the ownership is on you. Okay, two things in life they can control. Anybody know? Can everybody give me one idea? Two things in life that you can control. Yeah, in the back? Attitude. Attitude. Yeah, yeah. Your diet. Diet? Yeah. Um, work ethic. Work ethic? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Want to go to sleep? Yeah. More into it there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, back there. Yeah, like in your body. Okay. So there's a theme on all those right there. Okay. And one is a choice. Okay. You choose what to do, what not to do. That's your choice. Okay. You control that. Whether you want to listen to your parents, you know, whether you want to stay up late, whether you want to be on the phone, all those things you control. Right? After that, once you make a choice, what comes next? Somebody said it over here before. Work. Work what? Yeah. That's it, right? How hard are you going to work for that? Okay? You're either going to work hard for it or you're going to take it off and just kind of go through lazy. Right? Correct? So those are the two options that you guys have. They're two things that you can control yourself. Right? So, um, some of you guys have met me already, uh, personally, it's been great, my name is Cosmo Clark, okay, um, I've been in here in Dallas for about 20 years, originally grew up in uh, Ottawa, Canada, uh, spent some, some time in the miners there, um, and then officially made Dallas my home in about 99, when the Dallas Stars World Cup. Um, since then I've been coaching youth hockey here in Dallas, I've been doing strength conditioning, I have a company here. On the other side of town, we're going to start conditioning for all athletes from youth up to professional athletes and Olympic athletes, uh, women and women, no matter who they are. Uh, but my motto has always been training athletes for life. Right? Some of the best times of our life have been around sports, centered around sports. Right? So at this time of year, most of you guys, looks like you're here, hockey is your life. Yeah, your friendship, okay, the amount of time that you spend. Okay? Doing whatever you do, all right? Okay, it's around hockey, all right? And it's going to open up some doors, okay? All the way through that, all right? A lot of coaches around here, that's that's why they're here. They love what they do, they love giving back in the game, they love teaching, they love working with you guys, all right? They want to open as many doors as possible. Um, so, through through the presentation, I'll come up with my couple of guests to their talk. I have a close friend of mine here, uh, Sandy Jackson. Of mine, we've been working together for a number of years. He is a trainer um, and he is a nutritionist. But Chris Brown is up here. You guys have a chance to meet him. This is still playing right now. He's a hospital over in Europe and uh, allowed him to talk. He went through this whole process. You need to be able to run, okay? You need to be able to have your balance, stability, okay? Coordination, okay? Peripheral, all right? The mental psychology part of it as well, all right? Strength. Journey, speed, kind of the whole thing, all right? And yes, hockey is probably the biggest, I say probably is the best sport on earth, and uh, all that stuff comes into it. You know, not all the sports do not have that one. Um, but just playing hockey is not going to give you everything that you need, all right, to get to that level, all right? Playing sports, uh, like soccer, um, tennis, all those things are going to help you become an adult. Okay. okay, education, all right? Athletes are required to make good decisions off the ice, all right? We spoke about that having two things you can control. Remember one thing? Remember one thing you can control? There'd be a price in there for you. No, no, no. What do you think you spent on your phone? Just on a day, just one day. Not to put that spot over your parents are here or there. I'm savage. Just throw it a number. Throw it a number of hours that you think you're on the phone. Eight hours. How many? Eight hours. 
Eight hours. Okay. Eight hours in a day. Well, hey, that's up. Okay, 15 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Okay, throughout that time. Okay. How much sleep? How much sleep do you think you averaged last week? Well, I'm sorry, on a day, on a daily basis. What's your age? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Eight, ten, twelve hours, seven, seven hours. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So sleep like that. I need to sleep. You sleep straight up like this. You curl up the ball. Sit by your side. Okay. Anybody sleep in the fetal position? Curl up the ball. I'm gonna pillow. Yeah. Up the dice, dude. Yeah, we do. All right. Okay. How many times or how many hours do you think you're sitting down? Sitting down per day. Yeah, a lot, right? So there was a statistic that came out uh, about a year and a half ago or so. Okay, 21 hours of the day, we are in some kind of curl position, okay, for the day. So whether you're sitting down, okay, watching TV, whether you're sitting in a car, airplane, okay, um, and then you look at sleep, eight to 10 hours you're sleeping, okay, and then what happens on that one? Your body starts to shrink, your ligaments, tendons, muscles get shorter. Okay, got it. So you're all curled up like this. Hip flexors get shorter. Abs get shorter because you're all curling in like this. Okay, our neck muscles, you pull down like this. All right, so we're all crunched in. Our shoulders, okay, one of the first things I do when I look at athletes when I'm getting ready to train is I look at their posture. Okay, and a lot of you guys are like this. Okay, put it in a bowl like this, all right, your shoulders. I like that. Okay, so there's a lot of mechanical stuff in there that can, can hurt you as you go on. So when we were doing all of our stretching the other day, we did some corrective exercises for the cat cow. Okay, remember the hip flexor stretch, all of those things there to try to relax all those anterior muscles. Okay, and then we have to reactivate the posterior chain, which is all of our back muscles. So now all of a sudden we're up tall, and then before you guys realize it, you just gained two inches of height. You know what I'm saying? Which we're doing stats, I'll tell you that. Okay? Five three, then five five. Right? Okay? So if we continue to keep on going down that road, that means there's stability and mobility, injury rate increases. Okay, so just think about your neck muscles right now on being in this position, curled over on a phone, playing video games. Okay? What muscles are not working? Okay? Around here. Right here, okay. Our neck muscles, okay? okay. So there's a study on that one. There, when we lose our strength in our neck muscles, concussion rate goes up as well. Okay, the force, impact of what you're doing, you can no longer control those neck muscles. Okay, if we lost that. Okay, which we're not, we're not working on those little things. Okay, you understand that? So those are huge on that one. That's right at the top of the list. The strength. Okay, that